Hello, my name is Lauren Polovich and I'm the Associate Chief Medical Officer at the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. Today, I'd like to talk to you about focused ultrasound for glioblastoma and diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, which are two very devastating brain tumors that we here at the foundation feel like focused ultrasound could have a great impact on. I'd like to first review the four pillars of traditional brain cancer therapy, and then talk about why focused ultrasound is such an attractive option for an alternative or complement to these therapies. So the four pillars of traditional brain cancer therapy are surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and immunotherapy. Although surgical removal of tumors is the most effective way to achieve local control and prevent the spread of cancer, it is invasive and it comes with local risks of damage to surrounding normal tissue. Additionally, and especially important for brain tumors like glioblastoma and diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, there is often microscopic spread of cancer cells that is not visible to the human eye or even to the standard imaging techniques that are used to monitor tumor boundaries and or tumor spread. And because of this, surgical resection can often be incomplete. Now, moving on to radiation therapy, with radiation therapy, local risks include radiation fibrosis, which can lead to many negative downstream side effects. Chemotherapy and immunotherapy are systemic medications, and thus they are non-targeted by nature. And this leads to off-site toxicity and systemic risk. Additionally, the brain has a very special, unique vascular layer called the blood-brain barrier. And this barrier is great because it protects brain tissue from harmful substances like bacteria and other toxins. However, for brain cancer therapy, the medications such as chemotherapy and immunotherapy may not be able to cross this protective barrier and thus make these treatments ineffective. Focused ultrasound can be used to open the blood-brain barrier and in this way, allow these medications to hopefully cross and reach the tumor and um, lead to tumor cell death. So for all of those reasons, I feel like focused ultrasound is a great complement or, or alternative to these four pillars of cancer therapy, especially brain cancer therapy. It's non-invasive, it's targeted. There are no systemic risks associated with it due to the targeted nature of the treatment. There are minimal local risks because it is so precise and it can be safely repeated, unlike radiation therapy. Glioblastoma is an aggressive cancer of the brain and spinal cord. It has an incidence of three per 100,000 people in the United States. The median age of diagnosis is 64, although you may know people who have been diagnosed and passed away much earlier than 64. It is more common in men, and you may recognize um, some of the men in the lower right-hand corner who have suffered from um, glioblastoma and since passed away from it. The survival in the first year after diagnosis is only 40%. And um, part of this is in fact due to the infiltrative nature of these cancers and partly in fact due to the blood-brain barrier. I think these are two issues where we will touch on in further detail, but where focused ultrasound could really come in and make an impact and um, make those problems a little bit less deadly. With DIPG, diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, this is a malignant brain tumor arising from the brainstem in young children ages five to nine years old. The mortality rate at two years after diagnosis is a grim 90%. And current treatment options include chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and radiofrequency ablation. And again, the obstacle to effective uh, treatment in these, in these patients is really the blood-brain barrier. Um, it has been shown that the blood-brain barrier for the most part remains intact in these tumors, and thus it is very difficult to get effective chemotherapy and immunotherapy medications to these children. I'd like to point out um, Chad Carr. He is a young five-year-old boy who, who unfortunately passed away from this disease. And his family has established a foundation to support research um, in diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. And we have started 
to develop a relationship with that foundation. I'll touch on that a little bit more, but this is a very devastating cancer and we're really passionate to see what focused ultrasound can do to, um, to help these kids. So focused ultrasound has many different mechanisms of action, which you may know, but for um, brain tumors in general, we really wanna, we really focus on the mechanical uh, mechanisms for the treatment of brain tumors and those mechanical mechanisms being blood brain barrier opening, radiation sensitization, sonodynamic therapy. Uh, there are some studies looking at histotripsy as well, although we won't really touch on that today. We're really gonna focus on blood brain barrier opening, radiation sensitization and sonodynamic therapy as the, the mechanisms right now where focused ultrasound is really playing a role in, in the treatment of brain tumor, brain tumors. So we will start with um, focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening. This is the most well-studied mechanism for the treatment of brain tumors at this point in time. Uh, there are now hundreds of clinical cases of safely and reversibly opening the blood brain barrier using focused ultrasound in combination with microbubbles to open the tight junctions of the blood brain barrier. This uh, short video clip illustrates how this uh, actually works. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and play that. Basically how it works is micro bubbles are injected into a patient's bloodstream and these bubbles travel to the vessels within the brain where the blood brain barrier resides. Focused ultrasound energy is then directed at the site um, and the micro bubbles oscillate, which causes stretching and opening of the tight junctions. And then drugs illustrated by the purple balls in this, in this short clip can then traverse the blood brain, blood brain barrier into the site of interest. There are currently three manufacturers that are exploring focused ultrasound for blood brain barrier opening. Uh, the first one is the Exablate Neuro by Insitech, and that uses MRI guidance to open the blood brain barrier in the, in the areas of interest. There's the Carthera Sonocloud device, which is an implantable device, um, which, is, which really uses um, unfocused ultrasound beams to open the blood brain barrier. And then the Navifus device, which uses neuro navigation to, um, to target the area of interest. So really exciting stuff on the horizon. Um, we're really excited that, that there are different manufacturers exploring focused ultrasound for blood brain barrier opening. Um, on the right of this slide, I just wanted to highlight an exciting clinical trial that was published back in 2021, which was done at the University of Maryland with Graham Woodworth. And this really looked at the effectiveness of blood brain barrier opening um, in brain tumor patients. And essentially what this study found, I won't go into too many of the details, but what this study found was that focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening produces um, an almost two-fold increase in fluorescein delivery. And fluorescein is a fluorescent dye that's used in tumor identification intraoperatively. And this really means that there was a true increase in the penetrability, penetratability of the blood-brain barrier in these patients after focused ultrasound blood-brain barrier opening. This is really important for the for DIPG patients and for glioblastoma patients where um, a lot of the tumor, like we've already mentioned, um, has an intact blood-brain barrier. This slide is highlighting how many, uh, the magnitude of clinical trials that are ongoing for focused ultrasound blood-brain barrier opening in the glioblastoma population. So as you can see, um, there are actually 11 clinical trials that are ongoing um, in the US and abroad looking at focused ultrasound induced blood brain barrier opening in combination with a spectrum of different medications, including carboplatin, temozolomide, and um, bevacizumab, in addition to um, albumin bound paclitaxel. So these studies are really going to, the results of these studies are really going to show us whether or not focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening is effective in controlling the tumor to a greater degree than um, those patients who received um, no focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening with these medications. So really excited that this is uh, that this is going on and we've heard great results so far. 
Before I moved on to the next mechanism of action, I wanted to highlight um, what we see as a future for focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening. And that is really um, in combination with immunotherapeutics and as an immunomodulatory agent as well. So this study highlights here that blood brain barrier opening um, or with when it's LIFU, which is just low intensity focused ultrasound. Um, when, but when we use blood brain barrier opening, it enhances the response to immunotherapy in a preclinical rat glioma model. I'm going to draw your attention to this graph on the on the right hand slide of the side of the screen, which is the survival curve, and it shows that in um, rats with with gliomas, there was a, a significant difference in the survival of these rats um, compared to those that did not receive focused ultrasound. So I believe it was 58 days versus something like 37 days in the in the rats that did not receive focused ultrasound blood-brain barrier opening with CAR T cell therapy. So there's improved survival, there is greater immune activation and increased T cell killing. Um, so we really do feel like a huge part of the future for focused ultrasound will be with its immunomodulatory effects and its ability to increase the delivery of immunotherapeutics to things like brain tumors. So next we'll talk about sonodynamic therapy. Uh, this is another mechanism by which focused ultrasound is treating brain tumors. With this technique, a non-toxic toxic substance called a sonosensitizer is given to a patient. Um, right now, currently 5-ALA, which is depicted in this image here, is the sonosensitizer that's being used in clinical trials. So this substrate in particular has a specificity for tumor cells and thus accumulates in tumor cells in much higher concentration than normal healthy cells. Uh, focused ultrasound waves are then directed at the tumor and surrounding tissue where the sonosensitizer has accumulated. And the ultrasound beams are able to convert the sonosensitizer, which was non-toxic initially, into an active substance that has cell killing effects and thus creates tumor cell death. So sonodynamic therapy is a really special um, area where we do also feel like focused ultrasound has great potential, especially in brain tumors. There are a number of preclinical studies that prove the efficacy of sonodynamic therapy in glioblastoma animal models with both 5-ALA and another sonosensitizer called fluorescein. Um, and some of those studies are depicted here on this screen. There are currently two ongoing clinical trials of focused ultrasound sonodynamic therapy, one at the Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix, Arizona, and one in Milan, Italy. I did also want to note that there is preclinical work supporting the efficacy of 5-ALA and DIPG as well, and there is a multi-site clinical trial that is set to begin in the coming months with SDT for DIPG. Next, we'll briefly touch on radiation sensitization. So it has been shown that focused ultrasound with microbubbles in combination with radiation therapy has been shown to increase the efficacy and decrease tumor resistance to radiation. Um, the exact mechanisms of the synergy are still being researched, but hypotheses exist around increased oxygenation of the tumor after focused ultrasound, um, vascular shutdown, and the activation of ceramide pathways. And really this all culminates in an increased efficacy and decreased tumor resistance as we talked about which then um, leads to decreased radiation doses and decreased side effects, such as radiation necrosis. There's currently one uh, clinical trial that is ongoing in recruiting patients, and we hope for, to, to see more of those in the future. Since I've really focused a lot on glioblastoma, I just wanted to mention again that with DIPG, there is preclinical evidence that focused ultrasound blood-brain barrier opening is both safe and effective um, in DIPG models. So these are just a couple of examples here where we, um, we have found that focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening enhances the delivery of doxorubicin. It is safe and feasible in uh, DIPG models. And another study where um, it focused ultrasound blood brain barrier opening enhanced radio labeled copper nanoclusters delivery to DIPG and also increased immune checkpoint delivery. So there is 
preclinical work going on in, in addition to some clinical work, which I will touch on now. So there are uh, three clinical trials, which the Focused Ultrasound Foundation is involved in funding. One of those studies is ongoing and the other two should be um, expected to start soon. Um, the first of those is occurring in Columbia University. Um, then there are two studies, one at Sunnybrook and uh, one at Children's National, which are really gonna be complementary to one, one another looking at focused ultrasound blood-brain barrier opening in combination with doxorubicin. And then um, a, a study that we are aware of out of uh, the Ivy Brain Tumor Center, UCSF and Children's National, which is going to examine sonodynamic therapy in DIPG. Before I close, I did wanna mention that we are also really passionate here at the foundation about focused ultrasound enhanced liquid biopsy. So uh, if you think about biopsies in the conventional sense, there are many limitations because they are invasive. So there's a risk of infection and bleeding. Certain locations can't even be biopsied. So a lot of the times we don't really get a full picture of the tumor cells that are, that are within a tumor. And um, they often require, um, you know, repeated biopsies along a long course of treatment, which really sometimes can just not be feasible. So with liquid biopsy, um, we are able to analyze a patient's blood to look for tumor markers. And that's really been um, something that shows much promise in terms of being able to monitor uh, tumors a lot more easily than through uh, the traditional uh, biopsy methodologies. With brain tumors though, the blood-brain barrier, it's thought that the blood-brain barrier really prohibits the analysis of brain tumors because it's these um, tumor markers are not able to enter the blood as easily as they do with some other tumors, you know, where they don't have the blood-brain barrier. So um, we really feel like focused ultrasound, could, the blood-brain barrier opening could again work in our favor here to allow access to those uh, tumor biomarkers. Some advantages to um, focused ultrasound enhanced liquid biopsy are that obviously we would open the blood brain barrier to increase the quantity and quality of these analytes. Um, we would spatially target specific areas of interest within the tumor based on imaging. And um, again, it's non-invasive. So with longitudinal follow-up, it wouldn't require repetitive invasive procedures. And there is feedback to, to guide the precision of these therapies as the tumor evolves as well. So this, this is an area where we really feel like focused ultrasound has a lot of potential to help patients, both DIPG and GBM patients. And last but not least, I would really like to mention that the Focused Ultrasound Foundation is passionate about collaboration and co-funding, and we have established relationships with a lot of different nonprofit organizations. And we are still establishing yet even more of those relationships because we really feel like collaboration is going to make the process of advancing focused ultrasound in brain tumors a lot more effective um, and a lot more efficient. So we are working very hard to, uh, to promote collaboration and co-funding with different children's brain tumor organizations, different children's cancer organizations, and adult brain tumor societies as well. So with that, I would like to close by saying that the foundation is dedicated to advancing focused ultrasound safely yet, efficiency, yet efficiently to clinical adoption for brain tumors, um, as we really do feel like the potential to improve the lives of patients who suffer from these devastating tumors is huge. So with that, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.